the number one late night talk show, Gutfeld on Fox News Channel. This is awesome. Kat, Tyrus, thank you both so much. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah. My gosh. So, Tyrus, you win the NWA belt, NWA champion. What was that like? And did you message Kat right away when you won the title? We were excited. We were excited, yeah. Um, so we spent so much time working at work with social media. Usually the weekends is like our time with our families and stuff. Yeah. But um, I, saw, I was I was elated. I was shocked. I didn't realize the historic. Like you know, you make history, but then only 100 guys now, 101 guys have held this championship, and to find out that I'm the the largest NWA champion of all time was pretty cool. Although Andre the Giant could have won it any time he wanted to, he just chose not to. But uh, so it was it was a moment. I took a moment after I won the match to take a knee and thank the champions before me. But you know, uh, we have our own championship to defend every week yeah, exactly. here, uh, and it never stops. So at least I got a little break between title defense and wrestling. But with the great Gutfeld show and Cat, and a lot of people don't know that Cat's uh, also a writer on the show. That's true. So it's like yeah. nonstop. And she also has to perform, but she also has to make the big guy, the big little guy, uh, <laughs> funny every week. So uh, she has a lot of she wears a lot of hats. I know I wear a hat on TV, but Cat wears a lot of hats. And yeah, with that too, Cat. I mean, if you could talk about that part of it too, because not only are you doing things in front of the camera, but you're also trying to get the show together and, and writing it and doing all that. Yeah. yeah, I usually write a segment every day. I the guest intros and uh, a lot of people it's I don't know how people think this but we both have this happen to us where people say like well, who told you to say that it's like they think that people write for us we also uh, everything that we say on the show each of us comes from our own brain and I, I got my start um, as a writer um, I'm you know, still a writer I love writing I was a columnist for many years and um, in addition to comedy and all, and all that sort of thing so I love writing She's being very humble. She has, a, she has a book that's getting ready to come out that is, we're excited about. Uh, she writes most of the sketches, a lot of the sketches on the show, and she performs in the sketches. And yeah. Some of the most memorable characters, uh, Deadbeat Deb, Deadbeat Deb, Dirtbag, uh, Dirtbag yeah. Deb is, is one of my favorites. Yeah. And uh, she does a lot of impersonations. I, I think Pelosi's the hardest one that's for you. That's so hard because like, I don't really open my eyes like that and don't blink. Like I start crying. We, only, we have to have it only be a certain number of seconds because I start actually crying. It hurts. And Liz Warren kills your voice. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, she wears a lot of hats. So, uh, and it's kind of fun. And then I'm basically kind of like a lone wolf. Like, I'm just off to the side. So, we never really, there's never, we never run into a situation in the six years we work together where we say the exact same thing. Right. Even though, but we never sit down and be like, what are you going to say tonight? Right. What are you going to say tonight? Right. You know, we don't ever exchange ideas on topics is kind of like and but it's just a weird chemistry that's always kind of been there and you can't really create that wrestling we talk about you have chemistry with the guy in the ring you work with but on the show pretty much every day to come out and be funny and not get to a point where we start overlapping each other or anticipating so that's one of the i think the reason why the show flows so well is we're very different but yes. We just have a really strong chemistry. Yeah, the complimentary, it's just amazing with and you And there's two. no practice. No. So you can't really practice. Yeah, it. people are like, oh, you, you like, practice our, like, rehearse. Someone's like, do you rehearse your lines? Yeah. I'm like, what yeah. rehearsal? What yeah. lines? <laughs> it's go out there and just yeah. let's have at it and yeah, go exactly. at it and all. Yeah. What do you think has just been the key or some of the keys, the, the secret sauce to the success of this show? I mean, Fallon, Kimmel, Noah, Colbert, all of them, you guys, Beat everybody. Basic cable and free TV. You guys are beating everybody. Number one late night talk show. And we spot them 30 million a night. So that in itself is. Yeah, incredible. and our staff is like, it's, we have less than 20 people. And that includes like us and, and like, everybody. And you know, some of the other shows, they have more. You know, they have, they have teams. We have Tom. Of writers, yeah. We have two Joes. <laughs> we have two and Joes and yeah. Yeah, and, and Joan mm -hmm. and, the, and the rest of the staff. And it's like very, it's like one row. One row, you know, and then you'll see other shows at Fox. They got five rows. Yeah. You know? So it's a, and a lot of it just has to do with. I think the biggest thing is just that it's a chemistry that nobody can really put in a model. Right. I know other. I think Comedy Central tried a similar show, but when you have three very distinct voices, yeah. it's it, sometimes it just doesn't work, you know. And and you can't create it. You can't be like, okay, we're gonna have this one. 
and this one. She's a libertarian. I'm kind of a middle of the road Republican. Got filled. Got filled. You know, so, right. and, and he has a strong, strong personality, yeah. and, uh, and and he's very outspoken and will dominate you if he allows if you allow him to. And we just it just doesn't really. We, our personalities are very different, but for whatever reason, it just kind of works. Yeah, and I think we also. You could just you would never see this group of people talking and having these conversations. I mean, it was us that uh, one show when we had, you know, um, Dr. Carl Hart. Yeah. The, the like I was like the heroin professor, like super, you know, drug legalization. And then he's on with like Kill Mead and Harris Faulkner and we're talking about drug legalization. It's that's not the kind of thing that you would ever see. No. Uh, and you know, we're just we're also we like have fun. Yeah. And we all have, we our, own, we have our own lives and, and work hard on being that and being supportive. And I think and the bottom line is like, and again, no one takes themselves too seriously. Yeah. Very rarely have I said, how dare you, Kat? Do you really right. not understand that I'm the, I'm the, at the time, world television champion and I have an office. Yeah. And I will not yeah, be yeah, talked yeah. to this way. Like, we just don't have those personality conflicts. No one ever gets bigger than the show. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Because success does breed anarchy and it does breathe like well, I'm really the star and not you and you're not the star right. why is his picture bigger than our I mean those right. type of things run rampant but we've never had no, those we've never issues. had that and we can also obviously tease each other make fun of ourselves I think that's the biggest thing we're not afraid to make fun of ourselves yeah recently you had another pro wrestler on the show yeah. the mayor yes. of Knox Mr. County mayor, Tennessee yes. Mr. Mayor Glenn Jacobs, aka Kane, and just what another one that's funny but also intelligent and just came across very good on the show. What did you guys think of just having Kane on the show? And Tyrus, I'll say to you uh, first. Also, um, so, the biggest thing for me is that uh, Glenn, Mr. Madden, he was very influential with me when I was in the locker room at the WWE. And our conversations went from what club you're going to, what hotel's fun, uh, etc., to what do you do with your money? Are you saving? Are you putting it away? Are you paying attention to the political climate in your home, what your taxes are going to? And these are things that he, he would preach constantly. And then you started to look at things differently. He would talk about, you know, not everyone's going to be wrestling for 30 years, and you're not always going to make the end, but why you're doing it now, why you're able to make uh, a great salary doing what you love, you need to pay, you need to be conscious of what's going around. And that made a big difference for me. And then he practiced what he preached which I think is important, and we see that now with his politics, because as wrestlers we travel the world, and no one knows our fans better than we do because we see their towns, we see what's going on, we see when they sacrifice. Like, I'm gonna buy tickets to a wrestling show, and then we see the fact that they're struggling for work, struggling to keep the lights on. So you have to be empathetic for that. And I think, although we don't always get like libertarians, conservatives, we the mainstream media always kind of paints that picture of like stuck up, rich, disconnected. But I think of all the reasons why we are the way we are, because she didn't grow up in the greatest of circumstances. I mean, we've being all from had, Detroit, and, we've yeah. had the people try to put us in a box. Box, yeah. And like you, like oh, I don't like fit. The, like okay, so you work at Fox News, and that's all I need to know about. This. Yeah, that's right. And if you watch the show for two seconds, and you hear us talk, and you know that you, you could not be more. Laughter is not one-sided. It, it never has been, and so. Uh, that's the, and, and we just try to go out and be natural. We don't try to be like, I need to be funny to conserve those. Right. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because then the jokes are boring. I mean, it's just not. You just got to be yourself. And if anyone, and what happens is somebody who doesn't, if you don't watch any other Fox News and you just watch us, it's just we just make, we try to kick some knowledge, but at the same time, our job is to send you to bed at night with a smile on your face. And that's the goal, and I think we're doing a good job of that. And that's also a goal of professional wrestling. Same new wrestling. Good guys put the, the yeah. end. Yeah, put the smile on the faces and all. Yeah, I know. Like, I, yeah, look, I grew up, I mean, it, it was great. It wasn't horrible. But Silver Spoon is not accurate. <laughs> <laughs> you came from a working class right, family. Right, of course. Yeah, and, and, and it's people, they just think they see Fox News. So many people are like, well, that's all I need to know about you. You're this, you're this, you're this, you're this. And it's like, oh, wait, I'm, I'm not any of those things. Not but, even a little but, bit. but, like, yeah. I'm the person who they would say is close minded. Yes. When clearly yeah. they just show their hand. Yeah, and when you are literally at one point in your life, you have a mattress and a door that's locked. A yoga mat. Yeah, I think I think I think you paid your dues. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, cat, are pro wrestlers though taking over? Got fell. Then they had Kane on. It's like I, I, okay, not a big wrestling fan, but I didn't realize how many people that I knew works when 
you, Tyrus, when you first started coming on the show, we first started doing things together, I saw people text me like, you know the Funkasaurus? So I was right, like, yeah. I guess I do. Yeah. <laughs> because if you were, here's, and I guess, are you finished? No, no she's, she's writing, she's working. I, I don't know people, football either. No, no, but like people who work for a living don't always know what's going on because they're doing their work yeah. and they're building their story. And sometimes uh, it's kind of cool that she doesn't know the rest, but she'll never try to be a wrestling enthusiast or like drop knowledge. Although when I did host the show I did and I threw research. a question, she did research because she's a journalist and she hit me with the Barry Horowitz losing streak. And I was like, phenomenal, <laughs> yeah, phenomenal. I did my see, research. he got it. And, and that was like, see, see, so you don't have to watch it every day. But when I, and I was floored by it. You know, she did way better than Ortega did. <laughs> how do you pick? Bar- but I'm curious. But see, now I'm curious how you pick Barry Horowitz out of all the wrestlers. The <laughs> journals, yeah. I had a really long losing streak too in life, so I relate. It's relatable. To that. <laughs> so that begs the next question. So Tyrus, do you think one day maybe Cat could manage you in a match, or 1, or do some? I mean, she probably. Beat up right. all, half the people in there in the locker. I keep waiting for when the time is right to do something because I, you know, if Greg can't be trusted, he would turn on me in a second. I believe Cat would have my back, but Gutfeld cannot be trusted. He would, he would take an exa- and do nothing make him happier to be on the show. And hey, where's your title? What happened? What happened? I'm like, you know what happened. You happened. You're, you. Yeah. Yeah, you happened. So I think Cat would be out there going, um, "Is this right? Is we good?" Why everyone's, you know, so and so, and, well, maybe you should throw the towel in if I got in trouble, you know. Like, cat, no, I was gonna make a comeback. You just didn't know that. So, uh, but yeah, at some point, I, I would, I'd see us doing something. It's just that would be fun. That would be work so that fun. goes into Gutfeld. Like I'm juggling my wrestling career. Thank, I'm so lucky to NWA. The schedule permitting the way it is, it's staggered out. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I could work for any of the wrestling promotion, just because. Not for me, I'm, and I commute. I fly from another state. But Cat's workday starts every morning right around 8 a, 8 a.m. all day. Not to mention the other do other shows, other commitments, and you can't just go on there and phone it in. No. So the work that goes to do a show five days a week for her, um, it's never ending. So there's just not yeah. a lot of time. And you have she's married. Yeah. She has a family. Uh, yeah. she's, you know, you have to be able to balance it, and it, it's a cat full, and a dog too. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a full-time job on top of a creative full-time job. Yeah. And people don't always understand how much work goes a into being entertained just, every night. Yeah, I don't just show up and just like, what are we talking about today? Yeah, yeah. you can have a comedy special that you work on for a year, and you go to town and tell the same jokes every night. She yeah, has to be every, night. every bring it every night. It's not just the one hour that we see no. or the 40 minutes that we no, see on TV, of course. That we get accused of all the time. Uh, yeah, we work for 40 minutes a day. Show no. Up. no, no, it takes accurate. it takes about eight, it takes about six hours a day to be prepared. Because here's another idea: you have five minds on a TV show. Mm-hmm. You might have the best idea, but someone goes before you and they had the same idea. Or what they say, you know, it's not the same. Changes the conversation, conversation yeah. puts it, and takes it in a different direction. And I can't go. Well, hold on. I yeah. I clearly was talking about. Fiscal responsibility. Well, <laughs> even though Gutfeld went on this weird, weird tangent about aliens and their sexual habits. Right. <laughs> you know. Which have, you always have to be prepared for that. Because, because he'll go off the rails. He'll go off the rails. He will. He will be here yeah. something. Hey, I got title belt and bringing it to television. You were the NWA TV champ. Now you're the NWA champion. And was that your idea? To hey, let's have me, but also had the belt on the show too. So when I won the World Television Championship, uh, Dusty Rhodes started it, and Dusty was very important. My name is one of my favorite wrestlers. Held the World Television Championship, and I thought it was important to always remember where you came from. And if I'm in, and if, if any other sport, if you're a Super Bowl champion, you're going to wear the ring every time you're on TV. If you're a boxer, you're going to wear your WC. And I'm a World Television Champion. And I'm extremely proud to be a wrestler. I'm extremely proud of the, the, the industry and the, and the sport that I'm in. So I would represent it every chance I get until someone takes it from me. You know, and I surrendered the World Television Championship for it. So now Jordan Clearwater is the World Television Champion. So I would not wear that championship on TV anymore because I'm not. So I only carry the championship when I'm a champion and when I'm not, I'm not. Cap, you've held the belt. What do you think of that belt? A tremendous belt. It's extremely heavy. I couldn't yes. Barely. So. No 